Ah, good morning, everybody. I'm Old Man Sugarheart. Today we're doing Leviah Beat Us. It is, uh, oh, uh, right, I have to read. Ah, I know that. Look, you're ready. Having been constructed in some haste, the Whirl Eater may not be pretty, but I assure you she's capable. She's been fitted with what our friends at Naldik and Vimeli's are calling an elemental converter. Assuming the thing works, I will use the power of the corrupted crystals on board to rob Leviathan of his hold over water. Depending on how the battle unfolds, you may need to activate the device manually. Keep that in mind. Okay. It is expected that the Sahagan and their thralls will attempt to come to the Leviathan's defense. Accordingly, Maelstrom will once again employ diversions. Thank Ishtola. I would have your ass you assist in this effort. If you fulfill its purpose, your divisionary force must not want for numbers. By your leave, I too would volunteer my blade. We would welcome it. Having seen you fight in Sapsa, I dare say Fishbacks will find your presence highly diverting. Thank Redenishtola, if you would join the third levy, and Lady Ugiri the fifth. But what words have I for the man who has uh, made sport of slaying gods? Only these, go warily, for the sea is an unforgiving place to wage war. May the navigator guide you through the storm, warrior of light. I would echo the admiral's sentiments and add a few words of my own. Know that we all have the utmost faith in you, old. May the crystal bless and keep you. Okay. See, eat this whorl. Ah. Yeah. According to the average wait time, only 19 minutes. So much things to talk about in the meantime. One. I'm having stream troubles. Really sorry about that. Like, YouTube just won't update for me. Uh, I'll turn a few things off and on again after the stream, but you know, being live is more important. I can fix it in post. As long as you go to the generic live links, you should be able to find me. Also, how do you like my uh, drip? This is my early game uh, glamour. We had a glamour accident last stream, and so I needed to do something to fix it. And so I finally put together an outfit. I, uh, I believe these are Sentinel arms and legs. Uh, the pants I want to say had a W and two O's in it. We got a Foe Striker's Tabard and a Meseta on my face. And of course, uh, whatever great Moogle Axe this is. Looking pretty rad, if I do say my, so myself. Also, uh, as usual, I, I'm getting bombarded with messages on YouTube saying like, don't be afraid. Don't have social anxiety. Just stop it, okay? Like, you don't need to study for every trial. They're impossible to lose. And so, you know what? Just for their sake, today I didn't study. I haven't done Leviathan in years, but like, I know I can't lose. Like, what's the the thing that's going to happen? I think there's a button I need to press at one point, but I don't think everybody needs to press it. Worst case scenario, 
is there's another main tank and he has no idea what he's doing. And so, like, he would have to be a sprout like me. Why do I have, like, this super sus icon next to my name here? Looks like a, an Amoogus. Does anyone else see that? I don't know what that symbol means. It's not a sprout. It is also the day after Halloween. And by day after Halloween, I mean 4.30 a.m. after Halloween. Hi, kitty. Hop on up here. Get comfy. Meow into the mic if you're going to headbutt it. Did you meow? Yeah. So, like, I half expect nobody on Earth to be awake at this time. Because even if you don't celebrate Halloween, somebody's going to be ringing your doorbell. At like 8 a.m., right? Unless you live way, way out in the country. And even then, I kind of expect somebody to ring your doorbell. That's just how that works, isn't it? Hi, kitty. My kids didn't get much candy. My wife was like, this couple keeps inviting us over to their neighborhood to celebrate Halloween. And so this year we're going. And so I was like going to an unknown neighborhood on Old Hallow's Eve. I'm definitely going to wake up in Silent Hill, right? I'm fairly certain that's how this works. We beat Silent Hill yesterday, though, on Halloween. That was fun. Howdy, the glam looks great. The blue Among Us icon is an indicator that shows you're registered for a duty. Ah. And the glam looks great. Thank you. Like, this is the best I can do with, like, sub-60 glam. Like, I bet there's a lot of outfits at, like, exactly 60 that look a little nicer. But this is a pretty good outfit. This is... This might be the most beautiful axe for a long time. Like, by the time it's not the most beautiful axe... And this one we got naturally. I think this was just a lucky drop, possibly. I shook her heart. Hi, Sandra. How are you doing? Uh, but we're beating a few games lately. I mean, they're long overdue. We beat Neva. That one's not much of an accomplishment since it's only four hours long. We beat Silent Hill 2. I feel like I beat another game recently. I can't think of what it is. Maybe it was Chef RPG and we just got far enough. Because that, you know, cozy games... A lot of the times, it's hard to see where the end is. Doing good? Still at work, so you're just chilling? Nice. Did you have a good Halloween? How am I today? I'm doing pretty good. I mean, I am exhausted. Like, I was up late doing Halloween things. 
Trying to get the kids to shuffle off to bed. Uh, but still, they didn't have a very good haul. Like, they did so much better at Trunk or Treat. You don't really celebrate Halloween here in Korea. Plus, you worked until late yesterday, so you didn't do anything for it. Ah. That's fine. Maybe a little bit of a bummer if you're super into Halloween. Hello, Mergen Thotta. That is your name. Grain worker. A Welsh grain worker. Arpikoi. And what's your name? Sarath. Ladies. What am I doing here? I'm just running around in circles for uh, apparently 25 minutes on average. Just not enough healers to go around, is there? I've got a big presentation at work today. That should be exciting. I hate him. It's like a, a tech demo, but for all, all of the teams. And nobody cares. Like, all teams have their own projects, their own uh, product portfolios. Mine is not in theirs, so like, why would they have any interest? I don't have, I haven't done anything revolutionary or surprising. So like every time there's a presentation, which is like every week, it's just like, hey, we wrote code. Oh, good for you. We write code sometimes. Like, oh, death by meetings. But, you know, if I do this presentation, that means I'm off the hook for the next, you know, 100, 100 weeks while everyone else does a presentation. And so I can rest easy knowing there isn't a presentation just like hanging around the corner. Hi, Gramps. Hey, Suna. How are you doing? You know, since I'm an adult, I don't have to fill the time slot like I was, you know, a child or in college or something. If my presentation takes 15 minutes, it takes 15 minutes. And we all get an early start. And so that's kind of the plan. I see uh, far too many adults thinking like, oh, how am I going to talk for 30 whole minutes? about something that isn't that interesting. Here's the trick, you talk for five and say any questions. Like, everyone secretly really appreciates that. Unless you actually have something interesting to say, don't try to force it. So that's such a good tip, right? Adults are weird. Work is weird. Like everyone's pretending like it matters what we do. Gotta have that positive work culture. I'm like, I just do a thing, man. 
They asked me to do a thing, I did the thing. That's how you get paid. It's the nature of work. I imagine some people are passionate about it, and I, I can respect it, but that ain't me. I feel like the software development side of things is especially... especially passionate, weirdly passionate about what they do. Like, nobody wants to release bad code, sure, sure, but, like, too many people want to make perfect code. And that I can't get behind. I'm like, we could do sloppy code, have it done in five seconds, and then be on to the next thing. The business will think we're miracle workers. Add a cute cat video uh, to the end, too. Uh, I've got some AI-generated images. They look silly, and they're based off our team name. That always gets a last laugh. I don't know why. Everyone just loves the miracle of AI. AI works so well in uh, in in work culture. I don't know what what kind of signaling it is. It's like, oh yeah, you're on board with future technologies. AI is wild, right? My company is investing a lot in AI, like every other company in the universe. My company's doing it right, though. Instead of, like, trying to make customer-facing chatbots that are occasionally wrong, where you don't want them to be. Or highly manipulatable. They've got them doing, like, the back-end grunt work. It's like, here, read all these documents and spit out a summary. That's what AI is good for. And if it's wrong, it's only going to be as wrong as a human being who's trying to do that. Work culture does love peak appearances and minimal effort, I guess. Yeah, it makes me sad, sad to see people who are failing so hard for... <laughs> AI being this miracle software, right? It's just really good autocomplete. Like, that's all it really is right now. But yeah, summarizing it's amazing. That's the thing for sure, right? I mean, it is amazing that it can autocomplete pictures. That's neat. I got a real glitchy one, too. Like, w there's a guy who's sitting down and his leg kind of crosses over people. And so, like, the, the AI didn't know exactly which segment of leg it's drawing. So the dude's got, like, one giant, like, long spider leg. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah, it's great. The glitchiest ones are the funnest. There's also a lady in the back who kind of looks like a Picasso, and that's fine. I use Bing Create for, like, my my art, because I, when I cared enough to look, it was doing faces really well. Like, in the early days, faces were the real hard part. You just end up with, like, two black holes where the eyes would be and a mouth that looks like it was stitched together. It was weird. AI never does planes right. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it's a weirdly, weirdly complicated science.
Like, you'd think things like recognizing a picture of a hot dog would be super easy. But when you think about it, like, is a hot dog outside of a bun still a hot dog? Do hot dogs require mustard or ketchup? Do you look for mustard or ketchup to identify a hot dog? What if it's just a taco? It's wacky stuff. I had to write some uh, optical character recognition software once to read people's IDs. And I, I was worried that they were asking me to write it from scratch. I'm like, no, no, we don't do that here. I'll buy a license if I have to. I'm not going to like pick up where some grad student left off because it was too hard. Is a hot dog a sandwich? You know? That one almost feels like an easy yes. I'd say a hot dog is a sandwich. Gut feels ba uh, alone. Got in an argument at work the other day because somebody asked if soup was a, a meal. And obviously it's not. It's a side. At best. But the thing is, by the definition of meal, which is, you know, the thing you have to... you have to actually use if you want to make a valid argument, soup is a meal. Like meal by definition is just like any food that people eat regularly like it doesn't have to be filling it doesn't have to count it, like you don't have to be happy about it but like a candy bar i think technically counts as a meal by those definitions But that one I'm not opposed to. Like, I've had candy bars for dinner. You know, like, multiple. I was thinking this the other day. Uh, Snoop Dogg made some guest appearance on the Today Show, and he just made a bunch of weed references, and everybody laughed and had a great time. And I got a little bit jealous. I'm like, can I be the Snoop Dogg of like jelly beans? Can I have strong opinions on which jelly beans are the best? Can I be the guy? Can I be the man who is jelly bean man? Because I, I, I recently got a couple of packs of Jelly Bellies. I normally don't because, like, they're so gimmicky and there are bad ones. Like the ca Cappuccino uh, Jelly Bellies. Those are just coffee grounds. Like, you're not fooling me. Like, those are pretty awful. Opinion on black licorice jelly beans? Uh, they're growing on me. Like, when I was a kid, they were disgusting. But then I got, like, uh, black licorice tea. Oh, or Egyptian licorice. Uh, the brand Yogi, Egyptian licorice tea, is actually really delicious. And it slowly adapted me to the flavor of black gel or black licorice and it's actually really good jelly beer te tearless jelly belly tearless stream I wish I had the the wrapper with me I'd make it I can tell you all the F tiers right now juicy pear weirdly enough absolutely disgusting like I don't know why how I don't know how you mess up juicy pear like, you can make something pear-flavored and not make it, like, intense, but, like, Jelly Belly doesn't do mild flavors. 
And so, like, I have no idea what they bloated the flavor with, but it wasn't pear. It wasn't reminiscent of pears. It didn't taste anything like pears. It was disgusting. What are my thoughts on the buttered popcorn flavor? Really good. Buttered popcorn is actually, like, one of the better ones. I wouldn't say it tastes exactly like buttered popcorn, but it's a pretty good flavor. Pretty unique. Yay, right? I don't know, like, my opinion on buttered popcorn might actually be skewed. Had a weird social experience with buttered popcorn jelly beans. Back when I was a young man, sugar heart. Uh, we, I, I hung out on some blogging site because, you know, Facebook wasn't invented yet. Let's call it, uh, my face. And somebody posted something along the lines of, uh, you know, like, hi. And my, my current internet girlfriend at the time commented and was like, hi. And then some other random broad was like, hi. And my internet girlfriend being the rational and normal human being that she was, flipped out. She was like, hey, this is my friend, not your friend. We've been friends for many years. Yada yada, and they, they just exploded in this weird competition of like, no, I'm the friend. It was, yeah, it was cringe. Like, I don't use that word ever, but like, it was ridiculous. And one of these ladies was my girlfriend. <laughs> so like, what I did was I commented, I like jelly beans. And the original girl who made the post started talking about how buttered popcorn flavored jelly beans are the best and I'm like I've never had those those are a thing and so like we just went on to this like giant conversation about like jelly beans and which jelly beans are the best meanwhile my ex-girlfriend is flipping out because I'm not defending her in her friendship battle she was not happy with me I didn't have a girlfriend much longer after that. But, you know, I don't really feel any sincere loss over that. I mean, girlfriends are nice and all. But I just, I don't have time for that kind of nonsense in my life. Look at that, I completed... A marauder hunting quest. Today wasn't a total waste. I've been in this queue for 26 minutes. Where's my Halloween people? Wake up! There's gotta be some Halloween people out here who haven't gone to bed yet. I mean, it's only 5 a.m. Please say you guys were like 16. Of course we were like 16. Actually, I was like 16. My girlfriend at the time was uh, old enough to be creepy for dating a 16-year-old. But to be fair, mentally, that's where she was. Live letter is in less than an hour. People might be waiting for that. I don't know what that is. I was about to say mentally, yeah. Uh, she's fun. I miss her. She was incredibly attractive, which was, you know, one of the things that drew my 16-year-old attention to her. She liked video games. That, that was basically all it required. 
It's also just dead hours of dynamis until like maybe like seven hours from now. Fair. Live letter is a stream from devs about the upcoming patch. Ah. Oh. It occurred to me like that it might be a good thing that I'm not in Dawn Trail because Dawn Trail is still kind of going. Like they're just adding more content, right? Like a new expansion comes out and like in the back of my head, I'm like, oh, they finished a thing. But really, it's kind of like they just started a thing. Because like after patch 7 or whatever comes 7.1, then 7.2, then 7.3. And then it's really finished, right? Not 7 hours, 3 or 4. Okay. I mean, my stream time is my stream time. Plus, we're having a great time talking about, uh... Old girlfriends and jelly beans. <laughs> the YouTube mic community might get bitter that I post like unedited bits of this, but they're gonna deal with like googling the Leviathan bite and finding me talking for half an hour about ex girlfriends. You know, I, I checked up on that ex-girlfriend. I'm like, I wonder what she's up to. And you know what she was up to? She was uh, tweeting about breaking into her boyfriend's car to steal his stereo to get sell for money for rent that he owes her. She did not age well. Not to call her out like that. But, you know, I just, some, some respect for, like, live tweeting your, your felonies, right? Like, man, that takes some balls. May I have better luck putting up a par uh, party finder if I'm able to? I suppose I'm able to. But then I would lose my place in the queue and this half hour would be wasted. A good bullet dodge, though? Yeah. I've dodged quite a few in my lifetime. I don't know if you all know this, but I used to be cute. I mean, I'm still fairly cute. It's like if uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Zach Galifianakis had a baby. That's what I look like. When I was young, I was way more on the Jake Gyllenhaal side of things. Now it's a lot more Galifianakis. Except I think he's lost weight, so uh, maybe Hagrid? I don't know. I need to think of some celebrities I look like so I can continue not to exposing my face. It'll be out there one day. Uh, there was another uh, girl I dated for a while. And I, uh, you know, I took her to the county fair, as you do in a small town, because there's nothing going on ever anywhere. So the county fair was like, you know, the exclusive event of the year. And while we were there, we were having a great time. And I was like, hey, I'm having a real great time today. And she said, you know what would make this time better? Cocaine. And I'm like, oh, no, thank you. And she's like, oh, we dated for a while after that. I'm like, it's not like a deal breaker. I'm just not going to do it with you. She 
she was fun because her plan uh, I moved and she uh, wanted to move in with me the problem was like when I moved I didn't have a place to stay I was basically couch surfing and so she was like I'm going to move in with you and I'm like you can't do that I don't have a, a home and she's like I'm gonna live on the couch with you and I'm like I can't do that these people are being very generous by letting me sleep on their couch. So no, you can't uh, run away from home to move in with me. Against the wishes of com <laughs> complete strangers to you. And she's like, I'm doing it. And I'm like, if you do this, I'm going to have to break up with you. Because uh, it, if that's the only way to stop you from doing this, that will happen. And thus ended my relationship with uh, that particular lady. She's nice, though. Like, she makes poor life decisions, but, like, she's a very friendly and reliable person aside from that. And she had standards. She told me so. She said, I would never do meth. And I'm like, okay, well, as long as you've got uh, your life in control... Clearly, this is going to work out well for you. At least she's got standards, right? I hope she's doing all right. I worry about her sometimes. Not that she's ever given me any cause to worry. I'm sure she's doing great. I don't know. I've always had the strangest relationships. I mean... Sexuality is a weird, weird thing. Right? Anybody? Crickets? Like, honestly, mostly I'm just looking for somebody who is fun to hang out with. Yeah, man. Like, see? I tried dude once, dudes once, didn't work out for me. If I tried dudes, I mean, like, Katy Perry style. Like, I kissed a dude, and I didn't much care, care for it. He could have at least put on some cherry chapstick. That's the best you can ask for in someone? Yeah, cherry chapstick. I'm thinking my YouTube chat's a little delayed, and you're probably commenting on uh, being friends with someone. Let me see if I can adjust my YouTube live settings. YouTube's been fighting me weird. I'm pretty sure it was saying I was playing Silent Hill earlier. Come on, I know the options here. Hi, kitty. Come say hi to everybody. No. Nope. Kitty, yeah, he's here. Meow. Yes to both, right? Right? I wasn't able to live adjust the latency mode in YouTube. If YouTube was smart enough to actually pick the video I posted. Right now there's a fully updated like live upcoming Final Fantasy stream. That I couldn't get Restream to connect to. 
So now I've just got this random live stream on YouTube with no description, no tags, no, no one to ever actually find it. Flavored chapstick is always nice, right? Hello, kitty. My wife was an interesting story. Like, considering my dating history, you'd think maybe there was something severely wrong with her. She's quirky, sure, but like, very, very much legally so. I met her on an online dating site because that's what you do now. Very strange place for old people to be. When I joined the dating site, I could only find people who were significantly older or significantly younger than me. I tried dating both, and uh, both of them were mostly terrible. Like, uh, the people who were young, younger than me were just kind of dumb. Like, it wasn't like... Like it was their fault. They were just like learning how the world worked. I'd be like, Do you, oh, hey, we're gonna go fight. I'm like, hey, do you wanna go out for coffee? And they're like, no, alcohol, 3 p.m., meet me here. And I'm like, okay, young person. And then, like, at, by the end of the date, I'm holding their hair back while they throw up in the toilet. It was great. I had a fun time aside from that. Alright. This is the first time I've ever not studied for a trial. I have done this before. So theoretically, I'll be fine. I mean, also, it's impossible to fail these. By impossible, like 99.5%. But we'll only feel bad if it's our fault. We're trying to get over social anxiety today. I look back and realize, huh, everyone was pretty dumb at that stage, yeah. There's a reason I wasn't a successful streamer before now. It's because I was pretty dumb. It's not EX, you'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure what to do. Just follow the team and do what, when they do something odd, like group up and run to one side of the map or something. Yeah. Hello, Leviabetus. He was almost my thumbnail for A Realm Reborn. We went like, with, like, the artsy picture of Limsa Laminsa instead. He played all the way to level 90. I never made it that hard. Oh, yeah, we got a cat girl tank here. She will know what to do. Wait, she doesn't have tank stance on. Am I main tanking? I think I'm main tanking. It's a good thing this boat has walls. I was very thoughtful of them. your mistakes if you make them. Yeah. Okay, now she's got the tank stance on. But she's nowhere near me. Probably because she's dealing with ads or stuff.
I'm not dodging anything. I'm just not paying attention to anything, really. And we hang out here. Hi, everybody. Music got good. Keep me alive, everybody. That's your job. My job is to stand in one place and look cool. a high potion. I'm my healer now. You fall off in EX? Yeah. I think I recall seeing people fall off of this, so I imagine. Imagine in the hard difficulties. Get GG's over here. You, can I commission you? How's this work? Player commendations, there you go. You did a great job. Thanks, Sprout friend. Whew. All right, now to catch up on chat. Yeah, the EX doesn't have walls. That makes sense. If you're on the wrong side of the boat, then you fall off. Though in the old days, if you fall out, you couldn't be rezzed. Now you can still be rezzed. Neat. Return to Merle Weeb in the command room. Man, I knew she was going to be on the other side of the world. I would have spent the half hour walking over there. Glad to see me doing multiplayer with no stress. Starting to see it's not so bad. Well now hang on. Nobody said anything about no stress. And I know it's not so bad. Like it's... It's just there's a... Like a 0.05% chance that we can fail. Right? Like, all it takes is like two tanks that don't have know how tank stance works. Or like a healer who is, uh, I don't know, my ex-girlfriend. Like, there, there are reasons why things fail. I just don't want to be one of them. I was cool and level-headed. I'm always cool and level-headed. Inside, I'm a ball of anxiety. Knowing the urgency of your business, I thought it best to refrain from making conversation during the pa your past few visits, but today, I will permit myself a few words. <clears throat> I feel truly privileged to have the honor of admitting a hero such as you. You are an inspiration to us all, sir. And on that note, the Admiral awaits you in the command room. Wink. What about your room? A healer who is eating a burrito. Lilo Minsons are sworn to strive till sea swallows all, and swallow all it would have had Leviathan prevailed. That we still strive now, we owe in no small part to you. Not for the first time, you have delivered Limsa Lominsa from the wrath of a primal. Never has our nation known a stouter ally. 
On behalf of my people, I give you my humblest thanks. Totes welcome. Tis meet that I give thanks to old Mistbeard, too, for his fine solution. Whatever else he may have been, tis clear he was a resourceful soul. Would that I had a man like him in my service. That guy's like, I'm right here. Oh, he is like that. Before I set foot in these lands, I had no inkling that the people of Eorzea contended with such mighty foes. Suffice it to say, their existence came as something of a shock, as did the idea that they could be defeated. This experience has served to remind me of the vastness of the world, and the boundless potential of man. Pretty boundless. Though I am but a refugee in this realm, I would fain be of use to you in your fight. Know that I am tutored in one of the foremost combat arts of the Far East. It may seem outlandish to the Eorzean eye, but should any of your people care to learn, I would be pleased to initiate them. I want to learn. And I will see to it that they are grateful. I have no doubt that your knowledge and skills will serve us well. Wait, does she teach the ninja class? Besides, your art is not so outlandish as you think. Would you not agree, Master Thancred? Not escapes your searching eye, Admiral. Few are privy to this information, but Limsa Lominsa is home to a certain secret fraternity. Its members are trained in a form of combat not unlike your own. By my judgment, it should not be beyond such individuals to adapt to the techniques I witnessed you employing with such admirable deftness. I am heartened to hear this. I too noted a kinship between your style and mine own. Though it seemed to me that you fought differently in the beginning. Aye, <laughs> I suppose I did. What can I say? I'm a man of many talents. <laughs> Though you may labor to believe it, Thancred was once something of a scoundrel who fraternized with the criminal class in these parts. Ah, <gasps> no. You stole her! You jest, of course. But for a chance encounter with Alfino's grandsire, he might never have left Limsa Lominsa, or received an education in Charlian, or taken up his post in Uldar, which is where he trained in the Blade, lest you wonder. Minfilia, please! Let's just dump all this dirty laundry. <laughs> it would seem there is more to you than meets the eye, Master Thancred. Lady Yugiri, I am told that you and yours came to Eorzea seeking permanent resettlement, and that many domains have since been engaged as frontier hands at Revenant's Toll. Moderna is many things, but a place of refuge it is not. Know that I would like nothing better than to furnish your people with a new home here on Lominson soil. Alas, racked by instability as we are, our nation is in no fit state to take you in. Yet I'll not have it said that we turned a blind eye to your suffering. Until such time as we can do more. I pledge to send provisions. We are in your debt, Admiral. I realize that it scarce qualifies as repayment. But if it please you, I shall set about sharing my martial knowledge with your people at once. Neat. So she is the ninja trainer. I think we're definitely doing ninja or Stormblood. Feels fitting. You wished a word in private. The better not to spoil the festive mood. 
History repeats itself, Admiral. As the Kobolds did before them, the Sahagin resorted to summoning their god over a territorial feud. They acted in self-preservation. It may be that the Sahagin initiated this particular clash, but how it begins does not interest me so much as how it ends. I have not forgotten our conversation, Yashtola. I am aware that man bears part of the blame for the Primal's existence. Nor am I ignorant of the Sahagin's reason for acting. They sought to secure a place to breed and multiply that their kind might survive. Self-preservation, as you say. But we have as much right to live and thrive as they. If our own survival is threatened, are we to lay down our arms and welcome oblivion? Nay. And so you kill, that you might live. Yet if living is a right, then that right belongs to all peoples, be they men or beastmen. I'll not deny your reasoning, but when a storm gathers, it falls to me to see my people safely through it. That is my duty. And I shall do it. As must we all, Admiral. Stay the course then, but know that it will lead to no good end. Bimsh? Is that derogatory slang for beast man? Man has ever put himself first and foremost. To justify his actions, he clads himself in the armor of righteousness, though it be a fancy of his own making. In this, mayhap the Garleans and we Domans are not so different. Eorzea has become as a raging sea. If we are to keep our heads above the waves, we cannot scruple to drown the man next to us. When hopes of coexistence founder, strength must determine who has the greater right to live. Ah. <sighs> 